It seems like the way we talk about suicide is broken. There's a discourse, yes, but it's very one-sided. Whenever suicide is brought up in a public context, people tend to wrap it up in phone numbers for hotlines or messages urging people to reach out. And if you make a search for suicide on Instagram, it urges you to do the same thing. And even in philosophy, there's been this strange one-sidedness to the topic. And you might just point to David Hume of the Stoics and say, well, these guys found no fault with suicide but a constellation like Plato and Socrates did. Plato and Socrates said that if you kill yourself, you are releasing yourself from the punishment the gods imposed on you. They took your soul and they put it in your body as a form of prison, and when you kill yourself, you're actually acting against the will of the gods. And of course, there's the whole Christian philosophy's take on suicide, where they've imposed a sort of moral ban on committing suicide. And there's Albert Camus, who in the myth of Sisyphus argued against killing ourselves because it would just add to the absurdity of existence. But these guys are not surprising. What is surprising to me is philosophical pessimists and of course antinatalists. Philosophical pessimists and antinatalists, you know, see all the wrongs in life. They say life is inherently suffering and pain and none of them really argue for suicide. You know, a guy like Emil Cioran said that suicide was only for the optimistic people and he said we shouldn't bother with suicide, it wasn't worth the bother because you always end up killing yourself too late. He also said that he used suicide as a method or a technique or a thought to keep himself alive. And even Arthur Schopenhauer, you know, I think Friedrich Nietzsche was right in saying that Schopenhauer really didn't think his philosophy all the way through. Schopenhauer did diagnose the human condition very well and he did provide some very valuable insight to suicide, but he also did swap out the gaping hole left by Christianity with a half-baked similar variance to it. He talked about asceticism, about a self-negation, a negation of the will to life, but very much still an affirmation of life, just a negation of the self of the will. And antinatalists who assign birth a negative value, even those guys, Peter Vesselsapfe and David Benatar, didn't think we should kill ourselves. They just argued for a slow phase out of humanity. They just wanted a halt to procreation. The only guy who really stuck to his gun, who argued for suicide and actually ended up doing it himself was Philip Meinlander. Meinlander wrote that the true liberation to man lies in suicide and he went on to hanging himself on a stack of first copies of his book. The only place that doesn't seem to be any strong opposition to suicide is during atrocities. During 9-11, for example, people chose to fling themselves off the buildings instead of waiting for the collapse. You know, they cut their lives short, even for just a moment. And I haven't heard anyone yet contest their decisions. And really, I see two binaries at play here. One is, of course, life and death, and the other one is affirmation and negation. These binaries are deeply embedded into the discourse of suicide. They shape it, they form it, and they make out the two dominant oppositions, even though one of them is very quiet, it seems. It seems like affirmation comes in two versions. One of them is the bon vivant or the hedonist way of life. Life needs to be embraced, it needs to be kissed, it needs to be enjoyed. And the other position of affirmation is the more neutral one, you know, the good outweighs the bad. All of these things are bad in some capacity, but they are not so bad that I can't enjoy these things. And it seems like everything is an affirmation of life. I don't want to dwell too much on Friedrich Nietzsche, but I think something has to be said for his attitude of Amor Fati. Amor Fati is very much entwined with the affirmation of life. It's a person loving their life, loving their destiny, accepting the circumstances. And this is the prevalent version of affirmation. It seems to be deeply rooted in who we are and how we have created our societies. Even in the way we shape our discourse, look at the arguments. He was a coward for killing himself. She was selfish for killing herself. There's so much more to live for. What about your friends and your family? Suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. All of these things are rooted in the ideology of affirmation, not in what the individual wants, not in a complete negation of life, but in affirmation. And affirmation is truly omniscient, because even in the ways we characterize or describe suicide or suicidal behaviors, this ideology of affirmation is still fucking present. We say he committed suicide, like he killed someone, like he committed a murder or he committed manslaughter. Again, that's a very big difference to all of these things. Suicide is the consensual killing of yourself and murder is the non-consensual killing of someone else. Think about the feelings you would have 
If you heard about a friend who committed suicide, you would be sad, you would feel tragic, you would feel melancholic. And if you heard about a friend who committed a murder, you would hate the guy, you would feel anger. And of course, we talk about a person being threatened by suicide. And very literally, this is true. Suicide would be a threat to life because it would extinguish life. But that's not what we mean when we say a person is threatened by suicide. We say that the affirmation of life itself is threatened in that particular person. And this affirmation-centric discourse we have on suicide seems to create a culture of suicide too. Every time the press talks about suicide, it's always in the news of someone we love and adore who has killed themselves, or it's in the context of a terrorist attack. And whenever suicide is talked about in social media, it's always this call to action. You know, don't have these feelings set out and extinguish them. And this is why I'm talking about hidden suicide, because we see that the suicide numbers are on the rise. It seems like suicide is becoming more and more prevalent, whether suicide itself or an attempt of suicide. We're only talking about suicide in a life affirmation kind of way. It would be preferable to everyone if we talked about suicide in a negation kind of way or an individual kind of way, or at least acknowledging their presence. So please let me know what you think in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you all next time. Bye Felicia.